big shout out to Swit for sending us over their brand new Van Gogh 70 and 100 lights. I've never been a gaffer or a grip or trained technically in lighting theory or, or any of that stuff. So for me, lighting has always been like a taste and feel kind of practice. We usually drop our subject in a space and just try to build around that. And these new tools, these new Vango lights, I think help to make that even better. These lights are pretty amazing. They're RGB panels, which are great. Uh, we love panels because they're really compact. They travel really well, and these are thinner than any light panels that we have in the studio. They're V-mount powered, and they're really, really bright. One of the cool things about these new Vango lights is that you can actually get much brighter colors on these enclosures than you would out of a traditional RGB panel. On most other RGB lights, you'd only be getting about a third of the light's maximum power per color, red, green, and blue. But with these Vango lights, they're designed to retain maximum brightness on each bulb so you get the full wattage to each color, which means we're able to get up to three times brighter output than we'd expect from a 70 or 100 watt RGB source. They even have Roscoe and Lee filters built into their setup, so you can dial in any of the color settings just like a gel. And recently we had to do that on set. We had a daylight source that we had to gel with our Lee filters, and we were able to dial in that same color on our light panel. So we're used to using these big COB lights with our Bowens mounted light domes or soft boxes or china balls. And you know, when it comes down to it, they're big, big sources. So having a really thin, large, soft light source is great. Uh, you can get these sources real, real close, not taking up a ton of space, still being able to power them by battery power and last a long time. With lights, durability is really important. These Van Gogh lights are all metal construction with sturdy metal barn doors. All of the buttons and knobs feel really sturdy, which is amazing. I love that all of the colors and the brightness can be dedicated to specific knobs and you're not going through all of the menus just to find the settings that you need to adjust. I love that you're able to also adjust all of those settings from an iPhone app. We've had to do that in a bunch of situations recently and having the ability to dial in color and brightness from the chair or from the camera was really, really helpful for us. If you've done this before, you know that the walking back and forth is just not just irritating, but it just takes up tons of time. Lights in studio are one thing, but let's go take them onto location and see how they really perform. So we're here today at my friend Jana's shop. Today we're coming out to shoot some product stuff that's gonna go up on her new storefront window. You'll see when we get in there that some of the areas are pretty tight. So having these new Van Gogh lights from Swit, I think is gonna really enable us to get some shots that we might've been left to just get with just ambient or natural light. So we'll go check it out and we'll see what kind of stuff we can come away with. So I think we'll try to cut as much of the ambient light so that we can use some of these other panels to craft it and then from there we'll just build our scene. Let's try getting the light on this side. I think I want to shoot back this direction. We get some nice natural window light coming in from the front and then we can just kind of use this light to shape it so we have a nice big source. Let's, let's go ahead and get that, get that light on. That's at 100%. What, what are you at? 100. Okay, let's go down to like 50. Sweet. Cool. I think there's something cool there. I'm gonna have you just place the screen down after just so I can frame it up. But I'm pretty sure that this is decent. But basically we backlight to, on products, on, on people. So we get some nice contrast on the subject. So on this shot, we got the one by two instead of the the one by one, just because it, it gives us a nice spread across the entire place. Um, gives a nice fall off to the edges that you wouldn't have with, with the smaller panel. So it's looking pretty good just for just having a single light behind our subject. And I think we got a nice even natural light that pairs really well with the daylight that's coming in through this window. That's our close focus, which is right there where she's gonna lay the ink. And that's our end point where she pulls up the squeegee. That way I can just focus on the composition. Boom. And then just, just ready and we good. And action. 
this one. And go for it. You pull it up. So probably back in that corner right about here. A little bit further back because I think that's going to be in shot. Kind of similar, but we're motivating the light now that we've got some window light back there. So this will help to make it feel like it's still coming from the practical source. The nice thing about these red cameras is they have so much dynamic range and latitude in the light that we don't even really need to fill. It's just, it just looks good. And action. I'm gonna go a little bit wider. I might, I might actually stay on this to get a detail. So now we're going to put, this is the second layer, right? That's gonna be the outline of the flowers. And ready, and action. That's a cool sound. So this is one of the big parts, the visual parts of what uh, Jana and her team do here. We'll probably go check out some of the other parts, cutting, sewing, some of the things that you don't really think about, but really important parts of what they do. Hey ladies, I remember y'all. We're invading your space again. What are you guys working on? So maybe we'll work on Aaron's machine first. Since you're all set up. Uh, so we're probably, since we do have this faux window here, uh, we'll turn off all of the fluorescence and then we'll bring in the one by two again. And because remember I was talking about how those big domes, like you can't sneak them in back here. So having a really flat battery powered panel, you don't gotta worry about plugs, you don't gotta worry about any of that stuff. You just huge light source, soft light, and just stick it anywhere. It's pretty, pretty cool. So let's dial it back for kind of a similar color to what's in her sewing machine. With the RGB, you can kind of dial it in a little bit. Okay, and I am recording and action. Super cool, thank you. So, and we'll bring it back here and maybe we'll just try to see if we can do some fun where we just bounce it instead. Okay, so right now, Megan has the cutting tools and we're gonna get her cutting some material up. So bring up the two lights. So I think we're gonna get the one by two on this side, just giving us this nice soft spread of light. And then we'll get the one by one on the back, giving us that rim. Okay, so we definitely don't need the blue. Kill these top lights. And then how about, where, where are you slicing? Do you start from the left side or the right side? Let's do over right here first. Okay, perfect. And action. Thanks, Jenna. It's always Thank fun you. being here. Thank, Thank you for so letting us come play. Always. All Thank right. You. All right. We're wrapped. That was fun. So one of the interesting parts about shooting in a studio like this, obviously we have some, like we have a lot of spaces to shoot and keeping it consistent throughout the video is kind of an interesting one because lighting changes throughout the entire space. But I think, you know, just even having just two panel lights, we're able to get a lot of different looks. Thankfully they're RGB, so if we needed to dial in a little bit more magenta or green or blue, we were able to do that pretty seamlessly. The app helps us to get all of that controlled without even having to do the knobs on the back. But yeah, just overall pretty happy with these lights so far. Durability is good, light output's good, quality, it's pretty solid. Hopefully this, uh, this video is helpful for some of y'all. If you have any questions, drop me a line in the comments below and I will get back to them as soon as I can. That wraps it up and we'll catch you on the next one. Aloha.